On November the 28th, back in 1985, Brad McIntyre was told by his doctor that he had been infected with HIV and that he would die within six months. He broke off his relationship, he sold his belongings, he moved to another city so his family and friends would not have to see him suffer. Well, nine years have gone by. Brad is still with us. Yeah. And every year on November the 28th, Brad McIntyre holds a celebration of life just to prove that he's here and he's having a good time. We are very honored to have him here on World AIDS Day. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Brad McIntyre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when the doctor told you back then, 1985, had you, did you have any suspicions at all, or was it a thunderbolt out of the blue? It was a thunderbolt out of the blue. Why did you have the, AIDS te the test? Well, I actually had some swollen lymph glands, and we had done just about every test they knew of, and the only thing I hadn't done was the HIV test, and so I agreed to have it. It's a pretty big decision to, you know, and I, I, part of me understands it, I suppose, but why did you decide, break the relationship, leave the family, leave town, why? Well, because of what I perceived uh, they would be affected by, you know, the illness, you know, and... Uh, you didn't want to make them unhappy? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't want them to have to go through what I thought, you know, I was going to be putting them through in relationship to getting sick and dying and, and maybe um, you know, going through things like sarco uh, um, sorry, <laughs> Carposi sarcoma and uh, different things that would be hard for them to handle in relationship to watching me digress. You know. So you decided to go off and do it all by yourself. So here, you, you sell everything, you leave. It's like a bad story, <laughs> bad joke. Okay, you're sitting here waiting to die six months later. Well, seven months later, a year later, I guess better buy a bed now, huh? Get some furnishings. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go and ask for your furniture back? <laughs> no, but um, I, I, I did end up uh, moving away and still being you know, healthy and, and alive, and so I had to put my life together somewhat so that I could afford to live and, and uh, you know, have some sort of a life. But it, it was one that, you know, it was about leaving with dignity at the time. That's, what, that's what I felt, but uh, mm -hmm. that's only what I felt then. I don't feel that way now. Well, but there's also an, another big mental change. You, you went away to die. Now you've got to decide to live. I mean, and that's a huge mental change. How did you do this? What? Well, it, it was uh, after four years of living in that state of fear. Waiting, that, <laughs> waiting to for die. the end. <laughs> that's right. For four years. That's right. And I realized that maybe I'm going to be here another four years. And am I going to sit here for four years? You know, or am I going to do something about it? You know? That old saying, to uh, live while you're dying and not die while you're living kind That's of thing. Right. So you totally turned around. Totally turned around. And said, hello, I'm back. That's right. And you <laughs> moved, did you move back? No, I didn't. I've stayed in Ottawa. I have wonderful people that uh, have uh, been great support and uh, loving friends. And every year you have this wonderful party, and it's, it's a celebration of life. And it takes place on the, on the day that Brad was originally diagnosed nine years ago. This past Monday was the biggest celebration ever and CJOH TV in Ottawa was there so we can be there and let's have a look at the party. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. I'd like you to take a moment and look around the room. See each other. See that we are all connected. taking AZT, you're not taking any drugs at all, why? Um, I developed severe side effects when I was on the AZT 
and one of the side effects was neuropathy, a deterioration of the nervous system in my legs. And when I went off the AZT, um, all the side effects disappeared. And I couldn't tolerate the drugs, so I've never taken any. How since. long have you been off them? Uh, three and a half years. Uh, this is um, AIDS Awareness Day around the world. Is there something that you'd like to make people think about today or something we should be thinking about? Well, just to be aware and realize how much there is to share you know, and that it isn't about withdrawing from family and friends, uh, but uh, being connected with each other, you know, Mother Earth and the universe. You know. There is another wonderful thing that happens. There's a lot of good events that happen uh, around AIDS. And last September, there were over 100 Canadian musicians put on a concert at the Ontario Place Forum to raise money for AIDS hospices all across this country. The event is known as the Kumbaya Festival, and its primary organizer is an extraordinarily talented, wonderful lady named Molly Johnson, who deserves a very big hand for her efforts. Yes, Molly, well done. And they now have a, a calendar based on this event as well as a CD of songs donated by many different artists. Um, these are available to help in the fight against AIDS. Both the A, the calendar, and the CD are available in Sam's Record Store across this country and also on our 1-800 number, which we'll give you at the end of the show. Um, I sat down this morning to, um, gee, to write a letter <coughs> to a friend of mine in Australia who I'm losing to AIDS. We have all lost friends, and this is a day to celebrate the fact that uh, we are alive and that uh, those of us who are alive and have friends, that we take joy in their life. And that, as Brad said, that uh, we recognize what we have and that we take care of each other. And if you know someone today who needs your love and your comfort, um, you should stop watching the show and go pick up the phone and give them a call and take care of them today. It's been such an honor to meet you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. We'll be back in just a minute.